morning and welcome back to vlogmas day 18 i'm alexi nicole and i'm living my life by design so we're going to start off with the reason for the season bible verse we're doing luke 2 22 through 35 title is jesus presented in the temple when the time came daddy <laughs> can you just hold on for two seconds sorry jesus presented in the temple when the time came for the purification rites required by the law of moses Joseph and Mary took him into Jerusalem to present him to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and, and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple's court. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed him and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of my hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Amen. All right, y'all. Daddy and I are about to go hit the streets. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Good deed of the day is... Let someone go ahead of you in line. All right, so we got to do yesterday's good deed too. Buy somebody coffee and then let somebody go ahead of us in line today. So let's go. It's so nice out. Somebody just needs to come rake up these leaves. Well, I guess they got a few. Oh, they come tomorrow on Tuesdays. Oh, y'all. I'm not realizing like how tired I really am. Like, you know, like stress sleep be stress tired just be like undercover tired. Is that a cat? Um, anyways, we went and ran errands and I came back and knocked out. Like I was out. And I haven't been really sleeping sleeping. Like I'll go to sleep like around midnight ish. Daddy will come and try to sleep, and then he'll wake me up with the snoring, and then I move, then I don't fall back asleep. <laughs> it's just a mess. Anyways, I gotta go get a key made for myself. Key made for Daddy's friend, who he doesn't want to have a key, but I'm gonna give her a key anyway. Um, <laughs> and I still have not done my two good deeds. I'm slacking so bad. So let me see if I can try to get that done while I'm out. All right, y'all. So today just did not go as planned. I didn't get any of my good deeds done today. Um, and I tried just, you know, letting somebody go ahead of me in line. Every time I got in line somewhere, I was the last person and nobody was good deed in me. <laughs> And um, I didn't go to Starbucks. So, I'm just going to have to try again. It'll be a lot easier, I guess, when I'm like back into like normal routine, supposedly. But I'm sorry for the lighting. It really sucks. I'm, this is my last day here. At least I'm leaving tomorrow. I've booked a flight to go back to New York, work my trip, and then I may come back Friday. Because daddy has a doctor's appointment and I want to be there with his primary doctor um so I figured that I'll just I haven't answered y'all's questions in a minute and <clears throat> from what I could tell you all were enjoying that in the beginning of vlogmas so I'm just gonna kind of scroll through and answer some questions and you know I had some on Instagram too there was one that I got hold on okay guys Sorry for the awkward position, but just just work with me tonight, okay? Um, so this is a question that I got on Instagram, 
And I don't think I've ever really discussed this topic in detail in any of my 100 plus videos. So I figured it would be a good topic. Um, and this is probably more of a question that I would do in one of my flight attendant uh, panel style videos. But I don't have anybody else with me today. So I'm going to answer it. So it says, Alexia, I follow you on YouTube and Instagram because you have a godly traits, Jamaican heritage, and you're an F.A. Why? I think that's true. <laughs> I applied to your airline earlier this year and was disappointingly rejected. I am planning to do so again in late 2019. I love your airline. They fly to JA, Jamaica. Anyways, even though I want to become a flight attendant, I'm fearful of turbulence terribly. Help. How frequently do you experience this as a flight attendant? How do you deal with it? What are your suggestions? A YouTube video on this with a couple of your FA pals opinions would be awesome. Thanks. Stay blessed. By the way, saw your video of you and your crew praying before flight. So inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I have already responded to her slightly on Instagram, but I kind of wanted to talk to it, talk about it a little bit more in detail. Um, turbulence is real, y'all. Um, and there is no way around it to avoid it. You don't know when it could be coming. Sometimes you can have a little time to prepare for it. Sometimes it's just a little shake here or there. And then sometimes it can be very major. So if I want to be specific and answer her question, how do you deal with it and what are your suggestions? So when you're in flight attendant training, and I'm sure if you're training to be a pilot in flight school, you'll learn the details of this. So we um, have three different levels of turbulence. And if the pilots are aware, you know, via the chatter on their radio, they will always let us know if they can tell by the weather that we'll be flying through. They will definitely let us know during our briefings and say, hey, when we get to this point, it may be a little busy. So do your service early or postpone your service. Or, you know, once we get to 10,000 feet, it's going to still be bumpy. So we're going to ding, but don't get up yet. We'll give you a call. So those are things, communication is the biggest thing that you can do when it comes to turbulent when it comes to turbulence. Just so you're aware and you're safe, you know. Of course, safety is every airline's number one priority. By God, it should be at least. Um, so of course you want to make sure all of your customers, your passengers are safe. They're buckled up, you know, they're in compliance, things of that sort. You want to make sure that your galley is that your galley is prepped and put away and every you know there's nothing that can potentially danger you um, that's out of place just in case you know the airplane does toss some things around and then of course yourself my number one priority myself you want to make sure that you're locked into your jumps your jump seat and buckled up and the rest of your crew is as well um, don't try to be superhero during turbulence you know unless it's just something crazy now if it is a moment where you're not prepared for the turbulence. I had a video a while ago. I'll um, tag it up here. Um, my first turbulence I experience, I think is the name of it. And long story short, I was in the middle of the aisle. All of us, we were in the middle of the aisle doing our um, service. I had a snack basket in my hand. And all of a sudden, it just literally felt like the plane dropped out of the sky. And... You, I hear people screaming like I was on my way to the DR to the, Min the Dominican Republic. So you could just imagine <laughs> um, That was before I was in Min. Um People that you know, they're screaming I ha I had a the back of the aircraft was full of young kids on the baseball team most of them their first time flying and I was still new to flying this was the, was this was within my first six months of flying, you know so literally, y'all, like, it, we were flying, and it felt like the plane just went, boop, like, it just dropped. And I was like, holy. And I was the number one on this flight, so I had the snack basket, and I didn't drop it, but I just remember, like, kind of, like, spreading my legs to kind of get, you know, more of a, a secure stance, and, um... It happened so quickly, you know, in the moment, it just felt like it was two minutes of, like, craziness. But it was probably literally, like, maybe five, ten seconds. I don't even know. And I remember looking up, trying to see where my crew was. 
and because all the customers thank god were in their seats at this point in time Psh, some kind of miracle but everybody was sitting down at that time so i looked up and um my f3 it was a three-person crew i saw him sitting in a customer seat because in moments like that you just take the first seat that you can you know forget not being able to sit in customer you you, you take the first seat that you can safety is priority I didn't see my F2, but I think she was in the galley. So I'm sh after talking to her, she had sat down in her jump seat. So I was actually still standing. So as soon as I caught my balance, I um I walked up to my jump seat and I put the snack basket down and I immediately called the captain. And I was like, well, you know, like, what was that? And he was like, I don't know. We didn't see it coming, you know, sorry. But the best thing it to do is like, because of course you're going to have all the customers are watching you to see like what your reaction is so they can kind of know how they should react so from what i was told by one of the customers because you just you know you never know how you're truly reacting and i have facial expressions to kill okay um one of the customers told me that you know i, I held my composure together really well and you know, I when I went back out into the aisle, I you know, I calmed some people down because there was a little lady. She like when it dropped, she grabbed my arm and she was screaming, and I was just like, and I was calm. I mean, in my mind, I was like, what the was that? You know, so yeah, that's my little turbulence story. That's really the the most random, craziest turbulence I've dealt with. I mean, you have those rocky flights. Um, Last Christmas, I was working a late night flight to Austin from New York, and it was turbulent the whole flight, the whole flight, and I, and we were on the Embraer 190. So the and I was the F2, so I was in the back of that plane, and the back of that aircraft, the turbulence is so bad, so it just shook the whole time. Um, I can say that I have kind of over time just, I guess you kind of get used to it. But you never want to get so used to the turbulence that you don't take it serious. Because I've heard stories of, you know, the higher turbulence levels where people have really, really injured themselves. Broken legs and, and all kind of things. It's not something that you can, you know, like adjust your body for or anything like that. It's just, it's more of just a mental thing to know that, you know, as long as you're secure you'll be okay. You know, the plane is going to shake some things up if it's really bad turbulence, but it's going to stop eventually and it'll be smooth, smooth flying after that, you know, like, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not something that you can avoid. Um, but you'll get used to it. Like I said, like you'll be in the aisle sometimes and you'll start feeling the shake, the, the plane shake. And, you know, it's it's your personal preference of what you feel. And, of course, you want to communicate with your crew. And usually what happens is the back of the aircraft always has more severe turbulence in the front. And since I work in the front majority of the time now, you know, if it is shaky, like I can feel it, but up front is not nearly as bad as the back. I'll see the crew in the back still sitting down when they're supposed to be doing service. And I know they're still sitting down because it's too dangerous for them at the moment to get up because... The back is but so you know you just you have that understanding you communicate with your crew and you just make sure everybody is doing what is best for themselves and all the customers on the aircraft right y'all know i'm a little long-winded but that's the best way that i can answer that um so i hope that helps i know that probably doesn't really ease your mind about the turbulence but you can't avoid it like that's it's it's mother nature okay so then i have questions on youtube um, I have a lot of comments with prayers about my daddy. Thank you all. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. He's fine. He's he's fine. <laughs> as fine as fine can be right now, right? Danica Fisher left a comment. I'm going to kind of skip through into the, the question. She said, you might have talked about this a little last year, but were your parents born in Jamaica? If so, when did they come to America? Maybe you were born in Jamaica. <laughs> So, yes, my parents are both born and raised in Jamaica. My father is 14 years older than my mother. But, um, so he came to America before her. Um, I don't know exactly how old he was when he came here. I'll go ask him in a second. Um, but I can tell you about my mommy. <laughs> um, 
She is born and raised on the Mont on the Montego Bay side of Jamaica, um, Hopewell, Hanover area. If you're Jamaican, then you probably know if you're from the countryside. Um, and she came, I think she left Jamaica. She was the first one out of all of her siblings to leave and actually migrate to the U.S. Um, and I'm going to say it was like early 20s, 21, 22 or something. Um, and she met my daddy and they got married and they had me and my brother. Um, my daddy on the other side, he is from the Kingston side of Jamaica, Spanish Town area. Um, and when he actually first moved here, he migrated to Chicago. And then when he married my mother, she made him come to Houston. Because, you know, you, you got to follow what you love, right? Your wife say you come to Houston, you come to Houston. Um, and me, I was born in Houston, Texas. <laughs> Um, so I am a hundred percent full-blooded Jamaican. Um, I went to Jamaica pretty much every summer of my life until I was about 14 or so. Until I actually like started working and had jobs during the summer and things like that. Went to Jamaica every summer. Um, yeah, so I consider myself Jamaican. Jamaican American, whatever you want to consider it. I, you know, that's what I am. I am who I am. Yeah, just to put a little clarification there. My mother and father were both born and raised in Jamaica. They migrated to America when they became adults. Let me, let me ask that. How old were you when you came to America? Oh, I was probably like eight or nine. Okay. Yeah. 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 Maybe y'all heard that, but he said he came when he was 18, about to be 19, so, and my daddy's now 70. But he has always, you know, it's kind of crazy to hear that. Have y'all ever won, I, so this is just going to be a little chit-chat thought video, because my mother, y'all seen her in videos, and her accent is not nearly as thick as my father's, um, and she's been here less time. And my dad has just told me he's been in the U.S. 50 years and his accent is still very thick. And even though he probably, he probably travels back and forth to Jamaica way more often than my mother did or does, it's just kind of weird, right? How men just tend to hold on to their accents more than women. At least in my family, they do. So, ben Venetia Woods, I think, or Venetia, it's either Venetia or Venetia Woods is asking on my 10 things to consider becoming a flight attendant video. This video is a little older, but um, she's asking, am I going to quit soon? <laughs> and I don't plan on it. I mean, I was just talking to a friend of mine, and I was explaining to them that, you know, the longer you're in this career, the easier it becomes. So, you know, you notice that a lot of people either run for their lives in the first one or two years because reserve is hard and the money's not coming quick enough or they just you know ride it out and then they get to that seniority level where it's such an easy peasy cushy job that they look up and they've been flying for 30 40 years so i don't know if i'll be flying for 30 40 years if i fly for 30 years i'll be 60 and i definitely fly with people that are 60 and older so it's it's a possibility but as of right now, I don't have any intentions on quitting. I love my job. Um, How is my near and dear about tattoos? So y'all see my tattoos and videos all the time, especially this one. Um, and then she's referring to somebody else in one of my other videos. Was not in uniform, so one of his tattoos are showing. My airline, my that's near and dear to my heart, um, as long as they're not showing. So you go to an interview, they're not going to send you home just because you have a tattoo. They just want to make sure that when you're in uniform, it can be covered and not visible. And they actually do allow you to put band-aids and makeup over them. So, yeah. You're good to go. Come on over, boo. Angelica Diva 1988. And Missy Bailey. Hey, y'all. Angelica says, girl, teach us how to travel as employees. I know you travel positive space, but you still travel well. Um, and Miss Bailey is, she wants to know as well. Um, I don't travel positive space 
all the time. Everything has been non-rev, really, other than on the way to Aruba because I had that one positive space ticket. And when I went to Cuba, because we cannot non-rev there with my airline. Um, but everything else has been just standby, standby. I, you know, I don't really know, y'all. I just take my chances. I talk to all the senior mamas and senior papas. And, you know, I tell them I want to go here. And they give me all the keys and, and tips to what I need to do. And, you know, what's the best airline to travel to get there. And, you know, so I, I don't know. I wish I had a better answer for y'all, but I don't. I just pray on it and I go. <laughs> Amaka Udici. I'm probably slaughtering your name and I'm so sorry. But she says, hi, I'm Amy. I really want to become a flight attendant, but I'm in school. I mean, university. Don't know if I should stop watching tips of becoming one until I graduate or what. I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should apply because I'm not done with my studies yet. Um. So more than likely, I'm not the only flight attendant YouTuber that you all watch. Um, if you watch Oakland Woods, I believe she was in school while she was a flight attendant online, I think. Um, Devony, aka Let's Journey, she actually just graduated from school, so I don't know. I think she was taking classes online as well. Um, so, to answer your question, I, <laughs> this is such a hard question to answer because... When I think of my experience of college and what I studied and where I am now in life, I could really like skip the college portion, become a flight attendant, still gain my real estate license. Um, you know, I could still get to all of these steps in life without having the, the college education. Um, but I wouldn't like change it for the world like I loved college I love my university experience the friends that I made the growth that I gained just throughout being in college um so I would say stay in school I mean you're already there um you've already invested time and money just go ahead and get that little paper that degree um and then and then, yeah, being a flight attendant is always going to be there. You know, like, they can't put robots on a plane. You know, robots can't save no lives, at least not that I know of. Um, so, for now, I'm going to say yes. But you can always take your classes online if you really want to get out and fly. I'm not sure what you're studying and how it could benefit you, you know, if being in aviation now could benefit you in any kind of way. Um, but I loved my college experience. I made great friends. I learned a lot about myself. Um, I became who I was in college, you know. I became who I am in college. Like, I learned me in college. So, yeah, I mean, you know, like they tell you when you're kids, when you, oh, I want to grow up. I can't wait till I turn 18. Look here. It is no rush to become an adult because once you hit that stage, once you start adulting, it doesn't stop. <laughs> and even in college, as much as I thought I was an adult, baby, please, I'll go back to college any day to, 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 to have them little bills and do nothing. But the only priority I had was to study for a test. <sighs> Honey child. So I'm just going to say stay in school, finish up, um, and apply once you're done. Okay. Anyways, that's all the questions that I'm going to answer. I'm actually kind of getting tired. Um, so yeah, I hope you all enjoyed Vlogmas Day 18, and until tomorrow, make sure you subscribe, like, and share. Bye!